同学们，大家好，欢迎来到艾特精英的系列公开讲座。然后我是艾特精英的于老师，相信其中的几位同学已经认识我了。然后今天呢，就是由我们的王泽玉老师给给我们上一堂公开的写作课，然后课时大概是在一个小时左右。然后请各位同学们把自己的摄像头打开，这样可以跟王泽宇老师有一个更好的互动，好吗？那我们就开始啦，各位好好上课，拜拜。啊、uh, ，OK， 嗯、um, ，大家好，对，嗯、um, ，这个我在这堂课应该是用全英文来上啊，但是我现在先跟大家用中文做自我介绍啊，我叫王泽宇，然后呢，这个。呃，是艾特目前的一个写作老师，那么你们也可以叫我叫 Nick， OK？ 那么 OK， that's very sad， 对吧？好，那么就像之前，呃，我们的说的一样，对吧？大家可以把摄像头打开，然后把麦克风打开，大家进行一个这个互动。首先，我说话的声音 OK 吗？你们听得清楚吗？嗯，听不清楚啊？好，那我们就现在开始啊。So um. Welcome, to, welcome to this class. And uh, uh, as you guys can see, this class is about oops, Brittany. Okay, this class is about writing argument. Okay, and um, a lot of people came to me and say, oops, people keep adding. All right, so a lot of people came to me and say, hey, uh, Nick, I love speak. Uh, I love speaking to people. I love, let's say, hearing and writing, uh, hearing and reading. But I just hate writing, okay? Because writing the word, the word writing sounds serious, right? And a lot of people are、uh, tired about like grammars and compositions and sentences, okay? But you know, I was once in your shoe, okay? When I was a student、uh, in Singapore as a high schooler or in、uh, Canada as a university student, I used to think the same way as you do, okay? But later, when I saw a piece of video online, and that was、uh, that was a video made by a professor from the University of Chicago,、uh, he said that writing actually helps you to think at a higher level than you、uh, than you than you than, 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 just than you do、um, like casually. Okay. So let's imagine: Have you guys ever had this experience? Like you want to say something. In a very complex and very、um, smart way,、uh, you want it so bad that you have to actually write it down so you don't get it wrong. Have you guys had that experience before? Maybe writing a uh, uh, writing an email to your school principal, or maybe to some of you guys writing a love letter. Do you guys even write letters nowadays? No. <laughs> okay, but like when you write something important, right,、uh, or write something to show that you have、uh, carefully thought about what you want to convey to your audiences. Okay, so this is what it's all about. Like writing is helping you to think. It's a tool, not your enemy. Okay, and when you're writing,、uh, especially in schools,、uh, there is a very important part,、uh, which is argument. Okay, a lot of the teachers might say、uh, your argument is weak, or you have to develop on your argument. But what exactly is argument? Okay, so this is what we're going to talk about today, and also we're going to talk about、uh, how important it is. How do you write a basic element?、Uh, how do you write a basic argument and all the elements you have to involve in your argument? Okay, so this is today's、uh, four parts of our classes. First, why do we learn argument? All right, we were we've already covered part of it. And、uh, second part is fundamental principles of arguments. Okay, so when you write a、uh, when you write an argument,、uh, what what rules do you have to follow? Right, what structures do you have to、uh, do you have to put in your writing? So the third part is basic elements of argument. So basically, it means、uh, what um what kind of what kind of information do we have to cover? Uh, in an effective argument, and finally,、uh, we're going to、uh, dig a little bit into how to write an effective argument. All right. So first, why argument? As I just said, argument or writing helps you thinking. Okay, and argument is the core part of the thinking. Okay, 
uh, it's a language skill, that, uh, obviously, but it's also a uh, thinking skill, okay? Because when you uh, say something, it's usually very fast, right? It's uh, instant. So you don't have a lot of, a lot of space. You don't have a lot of uh, uh, time to really think carefully about what you're going to say. Or else you may sound a little bit um, like, like having learning difficulty, you know what I mean? Um, I remember when I, go to, when I went to uh, Canada for the first year, uh, it was uh, back in 2009. Um, I don't sound that foreign, okay? So um, when I was 19, I, I already sound like this. Okay, so I don't really sound very foreign. I don't sound like, hello, how are you doing? You know, I, I don't sound like that. So people cannot, like local Canadian people, they cannot tell whether I'm from like a foreign country far away. But at that time, I was very slow with my processing in my brain about the language, okay? So they thought I was, uh, instead, of the, instead of thinking I was a foreigner, they thought I was a retarded local. And after one year or two years, one of my friends talked to me and he said, uh, you know, Nick, you've been making uh, like significant progress, right? Especially in the university. I was like, what do you mean? Okay. And he was like, um, I, I can't imagine how, terrible the, how terribly hard it is for, for you, like with some impairments to, well, what do you mean impairment? I was like, he was like, you know, you, you're speaking always like very slowly, and with a lot of uh, pauses. And I told him, I was thinking, I was processing my, my language, my brain, because I'm not from this country, okay? But that's one, uh, that's one drawback of speech uh, or a spoken language. So you don't have a lot of time for you to process carefully in your mind about the words, about the sentence structures, or else people think you're retarded, okay? But there are incidences in life that you need careful thinking and uh, carefully structured grammars and languages. So uh, it's a necessity for you guys to be able to write uh, to help you to think, okay? Um, I don't know if you guys uh, are, have plans. It, it might be too early for you guys, but do you guys have plans for, let's say, master's degree, even a PhD? Anyone? Nicole? No? <laughs> All right, but you guys definitely have plans for university, right? And as you guys might, might have ex expected, when you enter university, you need, to, uh, you need to be able to think carefully and in depth, all right? So um, argument is definitely one very, uh, very important and effective way for you guys to develop that kind of thought, all right? And the second point why we learn argument is that even if you guys don't have any plans for, let's say, further study, and maybe you guys just want to do very casual jobs, you know, like chill, enjoy life, but still, um, you need critical thinking, right? Because nowadays it's a crazy world, as you guys know. Uh, we've just gotten rid of uh, a crazy president, okay? And uh, the, the social media is full of full of information of all kinds, right? And it's very difficult for us to not be misled by those information. And how can we keep ourselves, um, how can we keep ourselves cool and be able to uh, differentiate right from wrong? We need critical thinking, okay? We need to be challenging ourselves on some beliefs, okay? Let's say, oops, sorry. Let's say, um, let's say um, I believe firmly in something uh, that was later proven to be wrong, or I believe something firmly, but later I was told uh, there are some flaws in that point of view, in that ideal. Um, how can I know beforehand, before somebody tells me, tell, tells me I'm flawed? Okay, I need critical thinking, okay? I need to anticipate what my audiences may challenge, may use to challenge me, okay? And that's called critical thinking. So uh, as I write, 
as I write, some people might uh, might might say as I te as I give my writing lessons, some people might say that um, you know you are you are you are telling me your thoughts as if you have two personalities in your mind. One is constantly challenging another. Okay, and uh, this is very important for us because that keeps us. Um, in a conscious or in a very clear-minded state, okay? So we're not easily being misled. Okay, Aaron, welcome to conversation, right? So this is basically why we need to, uh, we need to study argument, both for academics and both for life, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at, I see some puppies. Okay. So now let's take a look at uh, some fundamental principles of argument, right? So first, um, can you guys tell me when you are about to um, convince somebody to believe in what you say? For example, um, how many of you guys like coffee here? Anyone? No one? <laughs> okay, so myself, myself is a coffee addict, okay? I, I have to drink coffee every day or else I get lost, all right? But uh, I know a lot of people are against that, right? A lot of people say, well, stop drinking coffee, that's bad for your health and all that. So if I want to convince, let's say my, my parents, okay? In, uh, convince them to believe that coffee is actually beneficial for uh, my health, what would I say, okay? So first, I'm gonna present my idea clearly to them. All right, so let's say, I'm, I'm not gonna say, well, you know, coffee might be good or coffee is like sometimes good, sometimes bad. You know, I have a, a mixed feeling about coffee. I don't say that, I, I, express my, I express my ideas clearly in short sentences. So I will say, coffee is good for my health. Okay, you know what, parents? Or you know what, father, mother, okay? Coffee is good for my health. That's called a present part, all right? And then I'll ask you guys, you guys tell me, okay? Will my parents believe that coffee is good for my health from this short sentence? Probably not, right? Okay. Oh, Aaron again. Do we have like two Aarons or just Aaron keep, keep joining the conversation? All right. Hello, hello, Aaron. Silent. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so it's obvious to see that my parents will not easily believe me just from that little short sentence, right? So I need to extend my uh, point of view uh, to show them that in what kind, what specific uh, field or aspect do my uh, idea makes sense, okay? So I would say, well, you see, um, coffee is, coffee has a lot of nutrition, uh, like co coffee has a lot of nutrients, right? It's nutritious for our body, okay? So it's good for our uh, physical health. And then uh, drinking coffee can make me mentally, mentally uh, happier, okay? And finally, drinking coffee is a uh, social behavior. Okay, that, that actually improved my social relationship with others. Okay, so from this point on, I'm extending my original argument into different fields, different components for me to be, uh, for me to further illustrate on each one of them. Okay, but at this point, if I tell you um, coffee is good for, our, or good, for our, uh, good for our physical health, is good for our mental health, and good for our uh, social relationship. Will you guys believe that? Will you guys say, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's healthy, and it's mentally good, yeah, yeah, I know, you're right. Probably not, right? So people will keep on challenging me if I don't throw out something that is strong, okay? That is totally convincing, right? People cannot easily uh, doubt that, all right? So that came to the final step which is called development or support, okay? Um, so in order to support, as I said, I have to throw out something which is um, unquestionable. 
usually unquestionable. So what kind of things, what kind of information um, is usually unquestionable? We say we cannot question something that's already happened, right? We can say, well, uh, let's say Donald Trump has been president for four years. That's a fact that's already happened. And we can say, well, I deny that, right? In the past four years, there's totally another person doing like this hand gestures and, 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 and building a wall, all right? That's, that's not a fact, okay? So first, we can use fact to support our ideas because fact is usually unquestionable. That's already happened, all right? Uh, another way to support is to use logic. Why we use logic? And it's because logic is, uh, is a very, um, is a self, uh, is a self reasoning way of uh, thinking. Okay. So let's say if you can explain something in full detail, it's usually very hard to be questioned. Okay. Uh, it, it actually doesn't matter if you're like 100% right or wrong. There's no 100% right, right? So we're, we're going to discuss, uh, discuss it later in the, in the next section, all right? So uh, we raise our idea first, main idea first. That's called a thesis. And then we divide our thesis into different subpoints, which are uh, components of why the thesis happens. And then we support each subpoint with evidence or logic. So it becomes unquestionable and totally convincing to our audiences. That's our basic principle of doing an argument, all right? But keep in mind, guys, um, in here, every point, let's say that, that is to say sub point, okay? Every sub point you raise need to be supported. You can't give me an idea that is unsupported, that's floating in the air, that, that, that doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Sometimes it will, it will even weaken your argument in general, okay? And finally, I wanna warn you guys, when you're making uh, arguments, you need to keep the, keep the reactions of the audiences in mind, okay? Uh, whenever you're making a speech or you're writing a uh, persuasive essay, you want to make sure that you know the audiences, or at least you can expect who are coming to hear you or read your essays, okay? Uh, so let's say I'm writing a, yeah, again, I'm writing a love letter, okay, to my girlfriend. Probably I have to uh, be aware of that my uh, audience is a, let's say, uh, 20, 25 years old uh, woman, right? I can't write the letter in a tone uh, that, that, that I'm writing to my, uh, that I'm writing to my brother, okay? Uh, I can't start the letter with, hey, bro, how's everything doing? Guess what my girlfriend will think, okay? I'd better start my letter as, um, hi, dear, okay, how long have you, uh, like, like, how have you been lately, right? I have, there has been, like, one minute since the last time I saw you, <laughs> you know, that kind of a romantic stuff. Yeah, so when you are making argument, you have to keep your audience in mind as well. Uh, so if you're writing a letter to your uh, school principal about uh, the importance of protecting the environment, uh, you, you, you definitely want to raise some ideas that are appealing to them, right? So can you guys give me an example, like what, you know, uh, what kind of facts or evidences or logic do you think is most appealing to your school principal or to your parents? Let's say you're going to um, put up a campaign about how to protect, uh, about um, like protecting the Amazon rainforest, okay? And you're writing a letter to your, let's say, uh, local communities, mostly parents, mid-aged people, okay? Those people with uh, like a lot of money to support, right? So what do you think you will say that will sound very appealing to those people? So mid-aged people, they care about health, right? Mid-aged people care about health. 
you can hear the uh, you can hear the people complaining about let's say uh, all the areas the air quality is terrible and you know the driving there are just too many cars outside right and uh, I, I can't breathe I'm coughing every day okay I better go to see my doctor you know that kind of things and so you can you can say that well if you guys don't protect the rainforest uh, the rainforest is is called sometimes because the lung of our planet okay the lung of our planet so it helps us to uh, improve the quality of the air and you can say that if the rainforest is gone uh, the air quality will be even worse than now and people will people can easily get uh, sick from that terrible air quality okay but if you're writing the same letter to your classmate things may change because just merely talking about uh, air qualities and lung diseases uh, is not very appealing to uh, high school students right so what do you think might be appealing to your classmate if you want to raise money for protecting uh, the Amazon rainforest. Anyone? Brittany? Oops, I saw somebody typing something. Animals, cool, yeah, animals, okay? So cute animals, right? Uh, there are a lot of um, like fluffy or not, <laughs> they have snakes too. But uh, there are a lot of cute animals in Amazon forest. Um, so you can just show pictures, right? Show pictures to your classmates and say, hey guys, let's look at this, okay? Aren't they cute? Right? People will, people will be like, oh, they're cute. And they're like, you know what? They're going to be in danger. And people will, like, people will, like, people will be like, oh, why? Like, like it's it, it cannot be right we gotta save them all right raise some money that's appealing okay people say yeah we gotta save save fluffy animals okay so this is how we keep our audiences in mind uh to maximize the effect of an argument okay we gotta select we gotta take pieces of information that is most appealing to your audiences okay Right. So uh, let's take a look at the basic elements of the argument. So we are going to pick a topic today to show the basic elements. The topic is the school needs a girls basketball team. Okay. So let's say I can see um, Kelly, Nicole, Brittany, all girls, I suppose, and Jeff. Not a typical girl's name. <laughs> All right. So girls, let me ask you. Uh, do you like to do you like sports? Like, do you often play sports? Or do you like to watch sports? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So do you think the your school or do you do you do, you, do your school already has uh, a basketball team? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if a school doesn't have a girls basketball basketball team. Uh, do you think they need it? Of course they do, right? But why? I mean, I don't know. It kind of seems sexist if they only have like boys basketball yeah. team. Yeah, that's sexist. That's the uh, that that's the first reason, right? But if let's say you really want to convince people like you really want to make everybody think that uh, the school needs a girls basketball team. Okay. And uh, you can't just tell people like it's sexist and we don't want to be sexist because some old people will say, well, well what is sexism? Okay. So you need some firm evidence, right? Cause you know, the evidence is on your side. You just have to take the evidences out. Okay. So this is, um, this is a topic uh, that I found um, typically, uh, easy, right? It's easy, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's typical for uh, for us to practice on. Okay, so first, we want to specify our purpose. The purpose for us is to uh, is to create or uh, set up a school basketball team in that school, and then we have to 
make our claims and we use evidences to support the claims. Finally, we need to explain why the evidences and the claims serves the purpose. Finally, we need to affirm, reaffirm uh, that our purpose is successfully fulfilled. Okay, so first, we need to identify the purpose. Um, see, we have a purpose here. Uh, the purpose means what the author, or you in this article, uh, wants to accomplish in this persuasive essay. So in this article, basically, uh, it's obvious that we want to uh, set, up a set up a school basketball team. So if you were writing something else, like uh, let's say the Amazon forest, okay? So what do you want to accomplish when you were writing that, art uh, that article? Is that protecting, protecting the Amazon forest you want? Or do you want to raise some money? Some people say, yeah, I want money. Some people say, I want to protect the environment. Both are okay, okay? Uh, so we can see that from the point of view or from the perspective you look at uh, the article or from the perspective you are trying to explain your article, um, actually there are uh, more than one purpose that you can identify. But once you identify your purpose, uh, the next sections will be uh, strictly uh, functioned to serve that purpose only. Okay, you can't have two purposes in one article. That will be that will be terrible. That will be chaos. Okay, so just uh, just guys, just you guys need to understand that there is no single one purpose. Not a single one purpose. There can be there can be uh, money. There can be protecting the environment. There can be everything. But once you identify it, the rest of the article will be serving that sole purpose, okay? So here we can say, I want the school to set up a girls basketball team. That's in our thoughts, okay? Once we identify it, the rest of the article serves this purpose, all right? And then we need to specify the claim, okay? Um, what is a claim? A claim is basically uh, the representation of your thesis or your main idea, okay? So that's a statement that asserts something. So can you guys tell me what assert means? So if I say, well, um, hi guys, um, can you do this homework after school? Maybe uh, you don't have to do it all, but let's say just do part of it. And maybe handing within that deadline, maybe one or two days late, it's okay. Does that sound assertive to you? No, right? Assert means that you tell people clear and strong about what you think, okay? You gotta tell people like, hey guys, do this homework by the deadline, no late assignment allowed, okay? This is called assertive, okay? So a statement that asserts something, uh, so you have to use short sentences typically, because short sentences don't contain uh, too many uh, too many elements that will confuse people, okay? And that keeps things straight and strong, all right? So use short sentences to so use short sentences to assert something. So we can say um, so we can say that instead of saying the school may try setting up a girls basketball team, which sounds like flexible but a little bit weak, okay? Uh, we need to say the school should set up a girls basketball team, okay? And that tells the school strongly about what we suggest, right? And then after our cl uh, claim was made, we need to support our claim. So we can either support our claim uh, with uh, evidence or pieces of evidence, or we can support it with reasoning. Um, so let's say start with evidence. Evidence can be, um, as I said, evidence can, evidence, evidence can be a various uh, a variety of things. It can be fact, for example, uh, the earth revolves around the sun. That's a, that's a fact, okay? There was once a song called Nine Million Bicycles in Beijing, okay? I said there are nine million, nine million bicycles in Beijing. Now it's definitely more than that. But uh, at that time when the song was wrote, that's a fact, okay? That's something we can't deny, okay? And then uh, we have Examples. So example is another uh, kind of incidences that's already happened. 
people cannot question or deny, right? Uh, we can say, well, for example, last time I went to uh, I went to another school and oops, to Laura. Hey, welcome to the conversation. Okay, I already feel like I'm a streamer. All right, everybody joins. Everybody joins in. I was like, welcome to the to the stream. But yeah, all right. So evidence. Okay, evidence includes a uh, fact and example. Okay, uh, the example is usually personal, right? Um, that we can say, uh, for example, last time I uh, participated in a sports competition, but uh, we don't have a school team, so we just have to like participate individually and finally forming a team. And when we win, uh, we, we couldn't have, we couldn't receive the prize together, blah, 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 right? That's uh, a piece of like, in, uh, the piece of example that is, uh, that's already, uh, that's also a part of uh, evidence, okay? So finally, we can have um, we can have statistics. That's also evidence. Okay, statistics. It's uh, not real incidences, but that's the data we get from the uh, from the real incidences. So that's also part of evidence. Right? We can say, well, over ninety percent people are, uh, are 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 let's say affected by more or less uh, depression or uh, in this case, we can say that we've already conducted a survey, okay? And in that survey, over 70% of our students support the foundation or the setting up of the girls' basketball team, okay? So these are the evidences that we can use. Uh, the key about evidence is that it has to be objective, okay? Objective already happened, people can deny. And the, sec the second part is reason. Okay, so reasoning is a kind of, uh, is more complex, okay? It consists of three C's I'll cover in the later section. Three C's, which are causation, uh, contrast, and concession, okay? We can use cause and effect to explain reasoning. We can use contrast to explain reasoning. And we can also use concession, which means that uh, give somebody, uh, give somebody what they, uh, give somebody, uh, give, Admission, yeah, give admission, admit that somebody is right, but later we rebut what he said, okay? So, and then after we uh, successfully support our, client, uh, our claim, we have to uh, explain why those evidences and reasoning supports the idea, okay? As we can see here, it says, uh, the statistics show that the imbalance between girls and boys' participation in sports is already quite considerable, okay? Um, especially in China, uh, as you guys may be familiar with. Uh, boys, you know, 90% maybe in high school, 80%, 90% uh, like to play, let's say, basketball or, or uh, soccer, right? But girls, not so much, okay? So we can show a statistic about, or show a survey, right? Uh, about, let's say, how often do you play basketball every, uh, every week or every month? And then it may show like 80% of boys say, well, we play, and 20% of girls say we play basketball. So we can show that statistics and we can explain, we can say the statistics already show the imbalance, all right? That links, that links the support with our main idea, right? And then we can say, in order to encourage more girls to engage in sports, okay? Uh, we use in order to here to show that this is our purpose. Uh, it's obvious that a girls sport team, such a basketball team needs to be set up. Right? Finally, we came up to the reaffirm uh, reaffirmation or the conclusion of our argument. And at this point, our argument is finished, okay? So how do we write an argument? As I said, uh, we have three Cs, causation, contrast, concession. So I'll cover each section here in brief. First, causation, all right? What is causation? Basically causation is because so, because so, because so, okay? And uh, it's, as you guys may already feel, it's quite logical, right? It's pure logical thinking. Um, 
when you guys get into university. When you get into university, you will uh, see that most of the experiments and researchers are aimed to find causation between uh, variables or incidences. Okay. And the logic from causation uh, is mainly built up by a chain of causation. What is a chain of causation? Let's say um, drinking coffee, all right? I, I really love coffee, like drinking coffee, okay? If I say, because I drink coffee, I cannot sleep at night. All right, this is a single pair of causation. But if I carry on, I say, because I cannot sleep at night, I have more time to read my books. Because I don't have, uh, because I have more time or because I uh, invested more time in reading, I know a lot of things. Because I know a lot of things, I get very good marks in school, okay? You can see a sequence of incidences connecting, connecting with one another, one by one, forms a chain, okay? And that chain, uh, if you take a closer look at the chain, you will see between the incidences, between, between each pair of incidences, uh, there is a direct causal relationship Right, you can literally add because in between the two, and to, to and still find them uh, making sense. Okay, this is a chain of causation, an array or a sequence of incidences that is connect that are connected by direct causal relationship. Okay, and finally, um, there are some incidences. There are some connections that um, that are strong. There are also some connections that are weak. Uh, for example, if I say uh, it rained, so I got wet. This is very strong, right? Because if it's raining outside, you go out, uh, you go out without an umbrella. It's almost like one hundred percent, over ninety percent, right? One hundred ninety, uh, one hundred or ninety percent that you will get wet. So that's very strong. But if I say because I got wet, I am angry. This sounds a little bit weaker than the previous one, right? Why? Because just be, uh, because the fact of getting wet all over doesn't 100% or necessarily make you feel anger. You can feel happy, okay? When I was young, I, I loved the rain. Okay, do, do you guys know there's a word for like people who love the rain? You guys can check it out. That's called pluvial file, okay? Pluvial file. That's a letter for that. That that that's a word for uh, people who love the rain, okay? I used to be a pluvial file or rain lover, okay? And uh, whenever I saw it's raining outside, I got excited, okay? So I might challenge that person, saying, "Well, getting wet all over doesn't mean that you will feel angry." So how do I proceed? How do I carry on my reasoning or causation chain uh, without being challenged or without being interrupted by those, by those questions? I use some examples to strengthen the link between the two incidences, okay? I can say, well, for example, last time I was uh, on my way to a very important meeting, the meeting was so important. I thought I, I, I knew there will be thousands of people watching me, so I put on my best suit and tie. Okay, my best suit and tie. And but in the midway, just it just rained, and I got wet all over. Okay, from top to bottom. And then uh, I was on a rush. Okay, the time was not enough for me to go back and change. So I knew I have to be. Uh, giving a speech in front of thousands of people, uh, like with, with water dripping from my hair, that's just a terrible feeling, okay? And I knew I was, okay, and I knew I am going to bomb, bomb that speech, okay? Bomb that speech means like doing terribly, okay? And just thinking about that failure makes me angry. If you put that example in your uh, 
in your weak connection, the connection suddenly becomes makes more sense because people read your example, they will say, well, yeah, if I were in your shoe, I'll probably feel, feel the same, okay? So use examples to support or strengthen your causation, all right? This is what we do in causation. So, mm, contrast, okay? Uh, actually, contrast uh, consists of more complex uh, methods or techniques, but here we're just going to cover the basics. Okay, so basic contract contrast is uh, is simply can be can be simply expressed as B versus A. Um, you guys probably heard of heard people say heard of, especially the parents say, well, um, just look at the top students in your class, right? They're doing like full marks and ninety percent. And just look at you. Oh, but like, like you guys probably are the, the, the top students, all right? But just excuse me if I'm, um, just correct me if I'm wrong. All right, so you, you guys probably heard your parents say, well, look at the top, class, uh, top students in your class, right? They're getting, getting full marks. And then look at you. You just stay at home and you know, play games, right? And, uh, and, and just chilling and do not study, okay? That kind of thing. Um, when I was in high school, my parents say that thing, say say that to me like all day long. So I know this too well. But in this sentences, you can see they're using a contrast. So you, uh, so my parents are using two different. Actually, actually, they're oppositely meaning right. Opposite uh, uh, examples. All right. To contrast and then to make their argument seemingly stronger than they should be, okay? Um, but when they're making a contrast, uh, pay attention to the order here. Um, are they trying to tell me how well the top students in my classes are doing, or they are telling me that I'm doing so terrible that I need to keep up? They're focusing on me, right? Okay, when they say, well, look at the top students, they're doing good, they're getting full marks. And then in contrast, look at you, you're sleeping all day, playing games all day. They're not really focusing on the top students because that's not, a, that's not their children, okay? They're not their children. So they are actually emphasizing the later part. That's why we write B versus A instead of A versus B here because A that I labeled red is always something we want to emphasize. We put our main ideas or main focuses at the latter part of the contrast. Okay, this is the rule of basic contrast. And then concession, that's a more complex way of uh, giving reasons. Okay, that consists of three steps, right? Uh, I named them uh, admit, analyze, and address. Three A's basically. So admit, uh, admit is basically when you, when you accept that your opponent's point of view makes sense, okay? But you don't reason for them because if you reason for them, you don't have spaces to rebut, okay? Just always remember, we're just saying, well, yeah, you're right, you, your point makes sense, okay? But soon, you're going to analyze and reject their point of view, okay? So in analyze, we focus on either drawbacks or flaws or false assumptions of the opponent's view. Uh, let's say the opponent said, uh, we, need to, we, need to, uh, we need to eat like as much as we can every day, especially like for fried chicken. Maybe he's a fried chicken lover, okay? Fried chicken, so good, okay? And you can, uh, they can have various reasons, right? They can have like, uh, it's cheap, it's delicious, it's easy to get, right? And you can order fried chicken literally any time of the day, all right? So how do you rebut it? You can say, no, fried chicken is bad, you know, it's not, right? You, you hear people, you hear people arguing on the street. They usually say, Fried chicken is good. No, it's not. Fried chicken is delicious. No, it's not, right? American people, they're 
kind of terrible. I, I think, sorry, if I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong again. American people are kind of terrible at oral argument because are, they're always using, no, it's not, no, it's not, right? But they don't give you any reasons. So how do we give reasons to those point of view? Well, fried chicken, you need to eat it. It's delicious, it's cheap. Yeah, you are right. But what are the drawbacks of eating fried chicken? You'll get weight, right? You'll, get, you'll be obese if you eat too many. And there are diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease is waiting for you. That's a significant drawback, okay? So you can analyze their point of view and see their drawbacks, and then you can rebut their point of view, okay? Also, people can say, well, you eat, uh, you eat uh, fried, oh, Maggie, okay, welcome to the conversation. And also people can say, well, um, you need to drink coffee because coffee makes you uh, hyper, right? It makes you hyper and uh, coffee keeps you awake. Yeah, it's right. And that has some benefit. But the flaw, what are the flaws? The flaw is you can drink coffee, let's say, uh, for other benefits, right? There are other benefits that coffee cannot achieve. For example, it's not as nutritious as some other drink. And also coffee uh, making you some, uh, making you some bad breath. That's another drawback, okay? So you can use flaws and drawbacks. Also, sometimes people claim uh, social media is less concerned about the accuracy of information, right? Um, so if, if we just let it happen for another 10 years or 20 years, all the people will believe in wrong, uh, in wrong things. They, they, they will believe in something they think is scientific, but actually it's not. All the people in the society. And people think, well, that'll, call, that'll cause problem. All right, that seems to be a fair point. But what are the false assumptions of this opinion? Well, they have assumed that all the people get all the information solely, solely from social media. But in fact, almost like, like the majority of people don't get their, uh, don't get their, info, don't get their info, information input solely from social media, right? They have newspapers, they have TV, they have, let's say their friends telling them all sorts of things. So the argument, uh, so the opponent's point of view is made on a false assumption. That makes it uh, less powerful, okay? After the analyze step, uh, you know that your opponent point is no longer as, uh, uh, as plausible as it seems, right? So then you need to put on your own point to address to the topic of the question. Because just simply say your opponent is wrong doesn't make you right, okay? Let's say, um, let's say my brother and I we're both into a girl, right? And I am sort of like malicious inside. So I went to the girl and say, hey, you know what? My brother has a lot of like bad habits. Like he doesn't brush his teeth and uh, he like, you know, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't wash his underwear. I don't know. And then, and I say, uh, and I ask the girl, say, hey, so do you still like my brother? The girl says, no, okay. He's disgusting. I don't like him. Okay, cool. So you must be liking me now. That's totally unreasonable, right? Because you, your just saying your opponent is wrong doesn't mean you are right, okay? So you have to put on your point to address to the original question. So we can see here, we can either contrast the drawbacks, flaws, false assumptions with your counter argument, or you can give your own points which addresses the topic and solves the uh, problems that your opponents cannot solve. So let's do a wrap up for today. Uh, first, argument is not only a useful writing skill, but also a way of critical thinking, okay? And uh, as I said, uh, writing or writing an argument, writing itself is a tool that can help, you, uh, can help us do, like, uh, do complex and deeper thinking. 
an argument is a especially useful skill in writing that will, prom uh, that will promote even further deeper thinking, okay? And then um, to successfully build an argument, you need to do three steps in order. First, present your idea, right? Extend it and support them with your uh, evidences and logic. And while you're supporting your argument, you have to pay attention to your readers. You have to keep your audiences in mind. Select the information that make the most sense to them, okay? And then there are five elements in total in a fully, com uh, fully, com uh, fully composed argument, right? First, you have to clarify the purpose that's in your brain, that's in your thoughts. You have to know what exactly do I want to accomplish in this article? And then you need to uh, convey your purpose into a sentence that sounds very clear, straight, assertive. That is called your, uh, that is called your claim. Okay? And then support your claim with um, evidences, that's objective information, or subjective information like logic. Okay? And then you need to explain why your supporting evidences or supporting logic um, is, uh, is linked or can solve the problem you raised in your previous sections. And finally, you have to reaffirm, or in another word, you have to remind the readers uh, your, your, main, uh, your main claim or your main purpose is. Okay? And finally, we introduced three basic uh, reasoning skills, right? We, uh, we said uh, causation, which is building a chain of causal relationship, linking incidences one after another, and finally reaching our goal. Contrast, basically putting two, uh, pu uh, putting two opposite things in one sentence, using it in contrast to link them to show that the latter part is significant. Okay, just remember that, just remember that experience, uh, just remember that example. Uh, the top students in your class, blah, blah, blah. In contrast, you, blah, 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 right? Your parents is always focusing on you. And finally, concession. Concession is a more complex way. Uh, basically, it's saying, yeah, you are right. You're making a good point, but your point have, uh, your point has flaws or drawback or false assumption. So it's not really that valid. And then instead, I am valid because my point contains blah, 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 you know, okay? So these are most frequent way uh, that is used to uh, construct or compose an argument, all right? So yeah, that's uh, pretty much today's, uh, today's uh, classes we'll cover. Um, do you guys have any questions or concerns or anything uh, you need me to explain for in de for detail? Or how do you guys feeling about this class? Nothing. <laughs> or do you find do you, do you find uh, writing arguments interesting? Or uh, have you have you changed your point? Uh, have you changed your thoughts against let's say writing or argument even slightly? Yes. Oh, cool. Okay, so if, um, if no, nobody has questions, and uh, I guess we're all good. All right, so that will be the end of the classes. Thank you guys for participating, and uh, see you next time. Thank you.